Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be walking through how I organize my K-5's curriculum. You can see here there is a lot that goes into the Abeka K-5 curriculum and I used the Abeka first grade curriculum with my daughter and I organized it and I just loved the way it was organized. It worked really well. There are so many different ways to organize your curriculum. So know that this is not for everybody, but you guys, let me tell you, I loved it. I'm gonna be recreating that with my K-5's curriculum. So I hope you guys stick around and see how it's done. So basically what we have here is we have from here to here our worksheets, okay, that I'm going to separate. We have his readers, we have our science, the art, we have his writing tablets, which are just basically his writing sheets that he'll be using. We have my teacher keys, my teacher guide, his flashcards. And we have these cool file folders that I'm going to be using this year. So I'm basically going to be doing the crate system without the crate. I'm going to be using these file folders instead. So instead of using a plastic crate, which you could still use to put these in, but I'm using a cubby on one of my shelves. But instead of using a crate with hanging file folders and file folders, I decided to purchase these from Amazon. And they are these plastic file folders and they come with five different slots which I thought was perfect for Monday through Friday and so I went ahead and picked up a packet of these they come in all different colors and yeah so let's go ahead and get started so the first thing I'm basically going to be working on is pulling these books apart these are gonna stay intact so I'm just setting these aside The art project book, I did pull apart for a few years that I did it with my daughter, but I found that the pages were really hard to rip out. These look like they're actually made better to rip out. I'm not quite sure, but I don't know if I'm gonna rip this apart or if I'm just gonna keep this one intact and pull as we go because sometimes our lessons don't align up or sometimes we don't use that art with a Becca, so I think I may leave this intact. I'm not sure yet, so don't quote me on that one, you guys. I may change my mind. Another one that I'm not going to rip apart is God's World K5. This is basically a reader that they do activities inside the book, so this is gonna stay completely intact. Another one that I'm going to keep intact is the K5 writing tablet. Now this one is for the manuscript because that is what we are working on. So if you have the cursive one, you can leave it intact if you would like as well. So this is gonna stay intact. Now the ones that I will be pulling apart are the writing with phonics, letters and sounds, K5, numbers, skills, arithmetic, social studies, think and learn, numbers writing tablet and the k5 bible activity book now this numbers cards packet is another flash card set and it was hiding in the books but this is going to go along with our other flash cards and i will do those ones later so what i'm basically going to do with each one of these books is i'm just going to start ripping out the pages now if you guys are um, going to be doing this you may want to see if some of these get unbound so I sit here and I rip out the pages each year. So if you want to do it in front of the TV, if you want to do it listening to um, you know, church, if you guys want to listen to a podcast, that is probably the best thing. Worship music, that's what I would literally be doing if I wasn't recording. Um, so I try to do a few pages at a time, but they can rip. So just be careful and take your time. Now when I'm done ripping out the pages, what I like to do is I just take the pages I've ripped out, stack them together, and I put them back in the book. Now because I am going to have to take breaks and do this at different times, that's why I like doing this. I don't want any papers to be lost or missing. So 
So now that I've already ripped all of the pages out of these books, I'm going to start organizing them per lesson, okay? So I'm just going to take these little slip covers off of them right now. I did want to mention in this book here, the number of skills in the back, you have a little growth chart. I would definitely save this and go ahead and do their growth throughout the year. Um, I do that. I still actually do that to this day. Every year we do it. So that's kind of fun to have for a little keepsake. But I'm just going to continue pulling these out here. Now for the writing, I'm going to hold on to this, laminate it, and keep it for my son as a chart. So I'm going to stick that aside as well. Okay, so on the bottom of most of these pages, you are going to see a lesson number. So for instance, this is lesson six. This one here is lesson two, four, one, nine, and four. So I am going to grab these and stack them in order. So basically, I am going to stack them um, for, for five days, okay? So lesson one to five, if that makes sense to you guys. But I'm gonna stack them in order. Let me see what this says, because is there lessons on here? Is this backwards? No, that's not backwards. So this looks like it doesn't start until lesson 73. So I'm gonna put this aside for a second until I get to lesson 73. I'm gonna have Bible first, and then I'm going to have language, this, language or phonics sorry not language so bible language writing i'm sorry phonics i keep saying language you guys because that's what my daughter's is and it's just i don't know it's on my brain so you know what i'm going to do this so you guys can see it i'm all over the place right now okay this is think and learn and social studies Okay, so let me get these to where you guys can see them. And I'm just going to start grabbing them and putting them in order, okay? So lesson one is here. So I'm gonna grab lesson one. If there's any more lesson ones, I'm going to grab them. That's lesson two. Okay, so the next one I have is lesson two. So I'm gonna grab this one here. There isn't any more lesson twos. So we're gonna go to lesson three, and I'm gonna continue to go this way because I want them in order, okay? So lesson three, I don't think there's any more lesson threes, nope, but there is a lesson four, and that's right here. So lesson four, lesson four, lesson four. And then now I'm looking for five, here's five. Then we're gonna go to six. Here's six, here's six, seven, those are eight, this one's seven. I wanted to mention that I pulled in this. This is like extra work and I'm just adding it into the papers according to lesson because it didn't start until lesson 73. So I've been adding this one in. So now when I pull, I just go in order all the way through here now. Okay, so this is the stack of all the papers going from lesson one to 170. This was in the back of the phonics. This was in the manuscript workbook. This was in the numbers. This was also in numbers. And then this was in the writing. So basically these are just extra practice sheets. I am going to hold on to these in a folder for him. These are extra worksheets for numbers for math, but I'm just gonna throw these away, you guys. He has plenty of work to get through through the year. I'm not even going to hold on to these. This 
was with numbers as well, but it doesn't have a lesson number on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in the same folder with these here. This I'm going to laminate, so this will be an extra sheet. This was in the phonics, and these are little certificates or little rewards when they're doing well. I cut these out, laminate them. I already have some. I've made some of my own also over the years, so I probably won't be using these ones because we have so many already, but just know that they're there. You can cut them out, laminate them, and when you notice that they're sitting at their desk or doing well, listening, answering questions well, you just hand them one of these and it know, it, they'll know that they're doing well. It's an incentive. And then um, I will hold on to this because I will give this to him when he knows all of his short vowel sounds. That'll be a good little reward for him. And then like I mentioned, I'm going to take out this. I'll just rip it and then I'm going to cut it so that it's a clean cut with my cutter. That's here. I'm just gonna cut this out and I will be using this this year for him as well. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start on all of the lessons. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to separate them for every five lessons. So one to five, six to 10, 11 to 15, and so on. So I'm going to stack them, I'll show you guys now. But I'm gonna set these aside because these are gonna be in an extra folder. So for basically him. what I'm going to do is I'm going to find lesson five, and I'm only looking at the front. Do not look at the back side. You're only looking at the front. So this is the last one in lesson five. So I'm taking this and I'm going to stick it here. And then now I'm going to go to 10. And that's the last one. So I'm just gonna stack them back and forth like this so they're separated. So once I'm done organizing this, I'm gonna go over a couple things with you guys about the worksheets and how I use them and how I store them so that I don't forget about some of the worksheets. Here are the stacks of the five lessons per pile here. So these are all separated. And then now I have my little file folders that I'm going to be using. You guys can use regular hanging dividers with file folders in a crate. I use that for our very first year um, homeschooling, but I thought that these would be really easy to store inside my son's shelf. And um, what I was originally going to do is I was gonna put each lesson in a slot, but I would have to buy a whole other case of these. So I decided instead of doing that, that I'm just gonna do Monday, or I'm sorry, I'm just gonna do week one, week two, week three, four, and five. So each one of these, are going to hold five weeks worth of work. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these and just stick them directly into the slot. Or I may, you know, I keep going back and forth about paper clipping them so then I don't have to dig. But I think that because they're in order, I'm just going to stick the whole week into each slot and that's it, that'll be super easy. So right now I'm going to open all of these because they are in plastic wrap. So I'm gonna go ahead and open these and get started with putting those into here. All right, you guys, so I have taken these all out of the plastic. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, like I said, putting these in per week. So I don't have to use as many of these folders. So week one. Week two. Week three. Week four. And week five.
Okay, so here are all of the filled file folders. So basically there's five weeks worth in each one except for the last one here. Now in this pack of folders, it did come with these labels. I'm going to use them on the tabs here. I'm not sure if they're reusable or removable. So I will see if they don't come off for next year. I'll just reuse them for maybe his curriculum again, or I can always put labels over these labels. Um, maybe even use Goo Gone, I'm not sure, but I am going to use these to label each one of these. So I'm noticing that there's only four tabs inside and this tab is counted as one. So I'll have tab or week one, two, three, four, five, and then it'll go week six, seven, eight. So there will be a tag here on the outside or if you didn't want to do that and you were using these file folders, you can always leave it blank, but just include it in your count. Do you know what I mean? So this would just say two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, like that, and so on, however you want to do it. But I'm going to label it. product of the file folders I just I started writing week one week two and then I got tired of it so I just started writing the numbers <laughs> but I went ahead and finished all the way through week 34 so I wanted to point out that on some of the worksheets you will see two different lesson numbers on the front and the back so for instance if you have lesson one on the front and lesson two on the back you would just take this when they're done with lesson one and you can put it somewhere specific on their desk. You can put it in a separate file folder, anywhere you guys would like so you remember to carry that on into the next lesson. For me, I will probably take it and put it back into week one where lesson two is going to begin or say you guys have lesson five and lesson six is going to be um, the following Monday. I would just take the lesson six and I would stick it into week two for the following Monday. Day. Um, just make sure you guys double check those because sometimes you can get confused with that. So I wanted to point that out to you. I wanted to share with you guys what I've done with these small little flashcards. So these are the memory verse cards. Then we have the mini alphabet flashcards. I did them on separate rings because these are all of the vowels. And then this is the regular alphabet. So I just punched holes in them and I put little rings on them. I purchased the rings from the Dollar Tree. And I have this little pouch here, so I'm just going to place these in here. So this is what it looks like. So I'm just going to set this at his desk. So with the large manuscript formation flashcards, I'm going to pro-click them and bind them just so I can just flip them over when I'm working through them. Um, so I'm going to do it this way. So I'm going to have the binding on this side here instead of on the top or the bottom and um, I'll just use them that way because I don't plan on putting these on the wall. Um, I'll just stand them up on his desk so that he could see them if he needs them to see. All right, so I went ahead and I used my pro click and I just punched all the holes down the left side. I did have to trim them back a little bit. Um, and then I used my spiral here. It's a pro click spiral. So I use that. I did have to cut it down a little bit because usually they go down the other side like this. So I did cut it down just a little tiny bit, but I thought that this would work really good. I didn't even laminate it, you guys, because um, this will be used for my son and he's my last kiddo. So I don't have to use these very long. So I just figured that they'd be okay this way but it'll be super easy for me just to flip it over. I could even lean it up against the wall at his desk if I need it on display. So I figured instead of putting it in a binder, I thought that this way would work really well. So that is what I did with his formation flashcards. So here's his forma formation flashcards, and then here are his smaller flashcards. I also forgot that I have number cards that I'm probably going to just stick in here with a rubber band. I will not be putting a hole through it, um, but I'll just rubber band it and stick it in the same pouch so I'll keep it all together that way and then I'll have this on his okay, shelf. So next I am going to be working on my video manual. I do like to take all of these out and rebind them and I'm going to use my pro click and I'm going to spiral bind them in one of my spiral bindings. You guys can use one of these. 
Um, usually the pro clicks, the binding for pro clicks sometimes aren't large enough for the bigger book. So I'm just gonna use the spiral one. Now I do take them out because I've noticed when I leave them in the books like this, they start to rip like that. And that drives me crazy, you guys, throughout the year. So I'm literally just going to rip all the pages out punch holes in them and spiral bind them and I will use it just like that. Now I will laminate a front cover and a back cover because it makes it a little bit more sturdy. and My paper doesn't get as messed up. Um, so I am going to do that. So that is my next step. They are all ripped out. I went ahead and ripped the back cover and the front cover. I'm going to just cut the sides down so that it's a little cleaner than that. And then I will share with you guys my next this step. This is the front of the book and it goes through the teacher's like manual part and then it steps right into your guys' daily guides. And if you go back to the back, you will see different appendixes. And um, if you guys wanna see a more in-depth look at this, you can always check out my other videos on my channel. I have one specifically on walking through this specific video manual. I have paper all over, don't mind it. So what I did was I pulled out the cursive formation flashcard, or I'm sorry, the cursive formation guide here. Even though we're not doing cursive, I will still put it with it. I have my manuscript formation guide here that I will keep with it that I pulled out earlier from one of the booklets. I have all of the charts that I pulled out from the phonics section in the appendix in the back of the book. I have these sheets that did not have lesson numbers on them. And then what else do I still have put off to the side? I think it's like that little phonics certificate in the growth chart. So I'm just sticking all of these extras to the side so that I can figure out what I wanna do with them. But I did notice that here in the appendix E for numbers, I saw that there were more um, charts and things that you guys can use. So you can have like a phonics um, booklet, you can have a arithmetic booklet or numbers booklet, or you can put them together in the same divider and put, or I'm sorry, in the same binder and put dividers. Um, but I'm gonna keep this pulled out for him as like, a chart. Same thing with the number houses, counting by numbers. You know what, you guys? I really think I have all of these still, so I'm going to have to look, but I just wanted to share with you guys so you guys can do it. If you don't feel like spending extra money on charts and things, you can always just use these. Um, and then seat work here in the back. I am going to leave this in with my video manual. And the same thing with these progress reports. Now, we are not accredited, and I don't think I'm going to really be grading this year um, just because it's not necessary for kindergarten. But I'll just put these in the booklet with this when I spiral it. So basically, I'm done separating all of those things. So I'm going to start hole punching these with my pro click, and then I will spiral bind it with this as the front. And I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in the back and then I have my front clear covers to go over it.
So this is the finished product of all of the K-5 curriculum. I'm just gonna kind of walk through with you guys what I did quickly, just to give you an idea. The art projects booklet, I just kept together intact so I wouldn't have all kinds of loose papers. And I decided to prep out all of his art stuff for the year so I didn't have to worry about it. So I basically went through the list that's in this art project booklet at the beginning because it breaks down what you need. And anything that I still need, I just highlighted with a yellow highlighter. So then when we get to this day, I know to make sure to grab it. But what I did was I took the bags, I listed the number, project it is, and I put the items inside the baggie here. The ones that I didn't have all of the items, I just wrote here like I need green paint for this one and a large sponge paintbrush for this activity here. So I just wrote it so I know to grab it. I do have all of the washable paints here. I have the glitter glues that he will need and I have the paper plate. So I basically have everything, but I just wrote that to remind me that I still need to grab the paint um, or the glitter glue and stuff like that. So that is basically what I did for his art project. So now they're all ready so I know that I won't miss a project because I don't have something. So what I did with the teacher manuals is I just ripped them apart. I cut off some of the binding and then I bound it with my ProClick. And I didn't use ProClick binding spines because they only go up to a certain amount of pages and these booklets are too large. So I went ahead and just used the spirals that I have already. If you are using a ProClick, you wanna get the four one pitch spiral binding. Um, so then I laminated a front cover. I used the actual cover that they had on the booklet. And then this is all the video manual. And then this is going to be my teacher key for my letters and sounds and my numbers. So I just used a divider here to kind of help me. The reason I like to redo the spiraling on here is because when you receive these, they already have perforated lines in here and they always tend to rip out the more you use them. So I found when I was using this for my daughter that especially the video manual, because you're using it constantly, it was always starting to, some of the pages were starting to tear out and that drove me nuts. So I figured just redoing them for the year was better. To prepare for this year for him was I took his flashcards and for the formation flashcards I decided to spiral bound them. I thought it was a little easier than having them in a binder just because binders are a little bit bulkier and you'd have to take the pages out. With this I figured if he was working on G I can just open the booklet up to G, lean it up against his wall on his desk and it would work that way. I wouldn't have to worry about losing any of them or them being out of order. Um, also, I thought it'd be easier this way than having them just with a binder clip or something like that because it keeps them all together. Something else with the flashcards, I took his smaller flashcards with the alphabet and his vowels and his number cards and the mini Bible memory verses. I just punched holes in the corners here and I put on these little rings. I purchased these rings from the Dollar Tree. Sometimes they do not carry them, but you can find them on Amazon or at Walmart. And I went ahead and left the number cards just in the little baggie that they sent them in. I thought that that would be a better way to hold on to them. And I'm just using this little plastic envelope that I purchased from the Dollar Tree. So just to kind of keep them all together so they're not floating around and so I don't lose them. So the next few items I have here is the science and his writing tablet. I did not do anything with these booklets because this is literally a booklet that he's going to read out of and work through. And then the tablets, I just left this in because I can tear them out when he needs them. Another thing I have here, these are just different charts and pages that I took out of the booklets for his work and from the video manual. I showed these to you guys earlier in the video, but I'm going to probably put these either in a folder or a binder or spiral bound them. I'm not quite sure. Um, I do believe that we have some of these charts like I mentioned from the video manual. I believe my sister purchased them when her daughter was in kindergarten and they are in color when you purchase them as charts and they are a thicker cardstock. But if you guys, again, do not wanna spend the extra money if you don't have to, you can always use these and they will work just as well. 
Um, also in here, I have some of the extra practice worksheets. So I'm gonna figure out, I may just actually keep this stuff in this. Now I probably won't be using these if we already have the other charts. So I'll just get rid of these, but I wanted to go ahead and share with you guys that you can definitely use those as um, you know a supplemental learning chart for them. And then the last thing I have to show you guys is all of his work. So again, I purchased this pack of folders from Amazon. They are a plastic file folder with five different slips in them. They have a little button on the front and they came with these little sticky tabs to put on them. I did them per week just so I wouldn't have to buy multiple packs of these plastic folders. I didn't wanna waste the money on them. So I thought it'd be just as easy to put them per week instead of per day. They still are in order from lesson one to lesson five in this first week. And then week two is lesson six to 10. So I'm just gonna grab out the sheets that he needs for lesson one when he starts the day. And if there are any pages on the back side that go into lesson two or three, I will just take that page and move it into the next slot or whatever slot it belongs in. Um, most likely it'll just stay in the same slot because it is working with weeks, but if you're doing it daily, you wanna move them into the next day where they belong. All right, you guys, that's it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed. Be sure to hit that subscribe if you haven't already, hit the like and the notification bell, that way you are notified anytime I have a new upload. All right, you guys, be safe, be blessed. I'll see you next time. Bye. What if the world had more of your smile? What if the wind could spread your love? What if your sweetness could reach everyone?